G'day guys, today I want to try and answer one of the questions that I received the most when playing Don't Starve Together. I constantly get the whole, I've survived X amount of days and I don't know where to go from here or I've just killed such and such boss, what do I do now? Many variations of people asking what to do next in the game. And this is a completely valid question because this is a sandbox game that doesn't really tell you what it offers. You don't have a tutorial, you don't have a guide, you don't even have Steam achievements to give you a vague direction of where to go, So that's what I want to talk about in this video. The way I like to approach this problem is by breaking the game down into four different phases. Survival, growth, the main story, and then the sandbox. And it goes without saying that these phases will look very different for different people. Some will need to spend a lot of time in the first phase others will be able to skip straight to the later phases. It depends largely on your skill in the game and how familiar you are with the game mechanics and also what you value in a good gaming experience. So survival, this one is pretty self-explanatory. This is mainly for new players in the game to get yourself to a position where you can withstand the four seasons including the seasonal bosses, the waves of hounds and other basic creatures, all while maintaining a steady food supply and your sanity. This is the game at its most basic, fundamental level. There is no way to really avoid this stage, and I'm not going to lie, it could take a bit of time to overcome it. There is a lot to learn and don't starve together. There are many threats and obstacles standing between you and survival. I've made dozens of guides to try to help new players in the game, and it's still nowhere near a complete repository of all the things you'll need to know. But it's also part of the fun. There are so many wonderful things to discover in this game, and piecing together bits of newfound knowledge into something tangible that helps you survive longer is such a fulfilling experience that I truly believe everyone should have. If you're really struggling though, I recommend putting your world in endless mode and to just experience as much of it as you can. And when you can make it safely to around 100 days, then you're probably ready for the next phase. And like I said, this length depends a lot on your ability. If you're already comfortable with the game, then you probably don't have to worry about this stage at all. So this next phase of growth might even be my favorite part of the game. This is when your base starts to take shape, when you start fighting more of the bosses, not because you have to, but because you want the loot. And this is when you go from apprentice to the master of your world. If you think of Don't Starve Together as an iceberg, surviving is just the small bit that sticks out of the water. This is the bit that will give you your first thousand hours in the game and beyond. And it's all about building from the fundamentals that you already know and rely on. For example, you need food in this game to survive. This is something you learn fairly early on. It's pretty easy to make enough food to keep you going, but then you start to realize that you can mass produce food in dozens of different ways depending on what you want and need. You can learn how to grow the best crops in farm plots. You can build pig farms to harvest meat, you can learn how to fish, you can collect honey from bee boxes, and so on and so forth. All of these individual processes require different skills and knowledge to get started and take time to master. And this is just for a small subsection of food generation. As you can imagine, you can extrapolate this to everything in the game. Resources, combat, building and design, boss fights, learning each playable character, learning the world and its biomes, the caves, the ruins, the archives, the moon. Survival is just the prologue to what this game is really about. And I'm not sure how many of you guys will agree with me on this, but I feel like every game deserves the chance to be played on its merits. I do believe there is some satisfaction in beating the game in the way that the developers intended you to do so. And that's more or less why I added this section here, it is pretty hard to judge what is the right or wrong way to play a sandbox game and of course it's open to interpretation but I always try to point people in the direction of following the main story of Don't Starve Together and playing with minimal game changing mods when doing so. These are things that change stack sizes or boss health or mess with other core elements of the game in a fundamental way. I don't really care how you play the game at the end of the day but I feel like this game deserves at least one legitimate playthrough. The main story of Don't Starve and Don't Starve Together is quite convoluted 
and split across half a dozen different forms of media, but thankfully, the in-game story is only slightly convoluted. This will revolve around you essentially role-playing as a character in the constant, where your ultimate goal will be to kill both Fuel Weaver and the Celestial Champion, who are widely considered to be the final bosses in the game as it stands. And there is a pretty lengthy pathway to both of these fights. For Fuel Weaver, you'll need both the Ancient Key and a Shadow Atrium to initiate the fight. You'll need to defeat the Ancient Guardian after making your way through the Labyrinth to get the key. You get the Shadow Atrium from fighting the Shadow Pieces on a new moon, after delivering all of the suspicious marble pieces to their corresponding sculptures. You then need 8 fossil fragments to build the boss itself, which you can get from the caves, most likely from mining stalagmites or spilagmites. I like to use a Bee Queen crown for this fight as well, so fighting Bee Queen is also recommended. You then need to find the atrium itself by fighting big tentacles around the caves until you get the correct wormhole. For Celestial Champion, you need to build the three altars on the moon. One of the altars can already be found on the moon and just needs to be mined out of rocks and assembled, but the others are a bit trickier. The Celestial Tribute piece can only be claimed by killing Crab King with Pearl's Pearl. So before you can even do that, you need to find Pearl's Island and complete 10 of her quests. The next altar pieces require the use of an astral detector, and this can only be built by venturing into the archives and learning the forbidden knowledge. However, the fountains of knowledge only work if you turn the archives on, and that requires an iridescent gem, which you can only get after completing the moonstone event on a full moon and then deconstructing the Mooncaller Staff. After you assemble the three altars, you need to brave the Moonstorm and help Wagstaff at least three times to collect the necessary components for his experiments. After building this on the moon, you finally get to fight the champion and if you manage to come out victorious, congratulations, you've essentially beaten the game as it stands. And I just want to point out that there are some fantastic world building and story building elements along this pipeline. I highly encourage you to interact with it as much as you can by exploring the different biomes and examining everything you're able to. And while this might sound pretty full on, and it is, there are many, many biomes and bosses that are not really involved in this story. And if you enjoyed it up to that point, I recommend going for a completion of the full list. And that leads us to the final phase of this game, the sandbox where you can happily spend the rest of your days doing whatever the hell you feel like with the game. For some people, this is base building. If you have enough time, patience, and creativity, you could turn the entire map into a base, or you could turn to mods. There are plenty of mods that add additional content into the game or change it entirely if you want to. I highly recommend playing the Forge and Gorge mods, as they also have some story significance attached to them as well. There are years worth of in-game events that you might have missed, events such as Year of the Varg or Hallowed Nights that you can turn on whenever you like. There are challenges you can take on like Eat Your Veggies that force you to rethink how to play the game and speedruns of bosses that put your abilities to the test. I've probably spent more hours than most people play the entire game just on this freaking egg game in the trade-in and half the people that see me play it didn't even know that it existed. And to be perfectly honest, I've not been able to find another game that offers this same kind of experience that Don't Starve Together offers. If you're on the fence about playing it, I hope this video convinces you to finally give it a shot. If you found it too hard and gave up in the past, I hope you give it another chance. I feel truly privileged to have had this game as the cornerstone of my channel for so long, and as long as the developers continue to update it with new content, I'll probably keep coming back to it. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave a comment below. Otherwise, you can jump into my Discord server if you want to have more of a discussion about the game. I stream on Twitch pretty regularly, so make sure to follow me there if you want to see me play live. And subscribe to my channel if you want more videos. I hope to see you in the next one, but until then, take care.